Hello. I've got a lovely little project for you today. This 1 12th scale overnight bag. It's fairly easy to make and can easily be adapted to suit your own style. Now, I'm going to be giving you all of the measurements as we go along. So, let's get started. So we're going to begin by making a cardboard template for our bag. And this card that I'm using, I think was out of a shirt packet, but as you can see, it's fairly pliable. And you could use cereal packet card for this. It doesn't matter if it's patterned, it doesn't have to be a plain piece as it's all going to be hidden inside the bag. So start off by cutting a piece that is 96 millimeters by 93 millimeters. And that is three and three quarters of an inch by three and five eighths of an inch. So we're then going to make pencil marks across the long edge. So this is the 96 millimeters here, or the three and three quarters of an inch. And we'll start at the top and we're going to make a pencil mark 25 millimeters in from each edge. And that is one inch. Like that, do the same at the bottom. 25 millimeters, one inch and then join those lines up. Put the rule just sort of behind the pencil mark to allow for the thickness of your pencil nib. Went offline there a little bit, like that. And this central section in here is the length of our bag, so that's the body of our bag. So now turn the piece that way and we're going to do some more pencil lines and we're going to come in this time from each edge by 11 millimeters and that is 7 sixteenths of an inch so again do those pencil marks at each edge of the template 11 millimeters 7 sixteenths of an inch and we'll join those up in a moment and then from each of those we're going to come in 25 millimetres again, or one inch. Same again at the bottom, 25 millimetres, one inch, like that. And then we can turn and join those up. So you will now have a piece that looks like this and we've got the bottom of our bag there and the sides and then these are the top flaps and then these are the ends of our bag. So we're now going to get rid of these outer sections. So I'm just going to shade those in just to show you which bits I mean. So it's that inch square section and then that little flap. And we'll do that at both sides. You don't have to shade them in, but I'm just doing it to make it a little bit easier to see on camera. So we'll just end up with this line along here and those two end flaps. So bring in your scissors and make those cuts. So we're really cutting out the corners. So you'll then end up with a piece that looks like that. So using your rule, fold up each of those side flaps. So fold them up and crease like that and then you can flatten them down. Same on the other side. And it just makes it easier by using the rule. You'll get in a sort of sharper and straight line. If you do it freehand, sometimes you can sort of go off track a bit. So just fold it round your wall like that and then crease it in. Do that on each of the lines. If 
final one there. Fold that in. And now you can see our basic bag shape. So for my fabric projects, I really like to use double sided tape. I just find that it works better than even fabric glue because the fabric will stick more quickly and I tend to get in quite a mess with glue. So I find that this makes it a little bit cleaner and tidier as well. Now I apologise for the state of the roll but I run out of mine so I had to borrow this from Matt's workshop where it's always quite dusty but the actual tape itself is, is clean. And we're going to apply tape to that end flap. So apply it along the flap like that. Bring in your scissors. I always keep a special pair just for cutting double sided tape because it can make the blades rather sticky. Trim along there and then we can use that off cut on the other flap there. Trim that off and then our next piece we want to put on the outside of these end flaps. So turn it over and then put a piece on each end like that. Again trim that around. Trim sort of any little overhanging bits. A bit there as well. So you can now cut a piece of fabric to cover the template, and I'm using this lovely dark blue and cream fabric, which I bought from Hodges Haberdashery the last time I was at Miniatura. And do have a look at their website as they've got some really lovely fabrics. And you want to cut a piece so that you're leaving a 12 millimetre border at the edges of your longest sides. That's about half an inch. We're then going to remove the double sided tape backing from each of those end flaps and pull over the fabric. Don't pull it too tightly. end as well. Stick that down. And we now want to cut another piece of double sided tape to go on top of the fabric again along each of those flaps. So if you sort of cut it to length first. And then cut that in half. about the right size. So stick that along there, press it nice and firmly into place along there as well so you're not overlapping the fabric. And press it firmly into place. So now cut a piece of fabric from your coordinating fabric and this is going to give the indication of a zip once we join these two sides together. And I'm also going to use it for the base of the handles. So you want to cut it about as long as that flap again, and then about 25 millimetres or an inch wide. So remove the back in again from one of the flaps. I think I've pulled up the whole piece there. Just press that down on my nail. and press that into place. Okay, give it a good firm press. Remove the other piece of backing. And then bring the two pieces together like that so that the flap of fabric is on the inside. Shape your template like that. 
and it doesn't really matter if you can't see too much of that it's just given the indication that there is an open in there and that there's a zip in there so even if you can just see a little sort of hairline crack as I can there that's fine so shape the template so sort of give it a press at the corners and this will help it keep its shape and stay together and get your fingers in and really press the other side of that piece of fabric against the tape in the bottoms of the bag in as well like that have a peep in and you then want to push up that side flap actually if you sort of open the fabric it makes it a little bit more easy do it that side as well and we then want to trim away some of this fabric so if you sort of maybe trim half of it away there be really careful you're not taking too much so feel with your finger where the end of your bag is and then just trim away about half of it like that and do that at both ends like so so now, sort of holding your bag together, pushing those ends in, we want to trim along each corner. So you can sort of fold the fabric as well so you know where the corner is and where you're going. Trim along like that. Don't go right up to the card, maybe leave a millimetre or so. Oops. <laughs> Bring that along that bottom edge as well. You can sort of feel with the ends of your scissors where the corners are. That's so we're sort of making four flaps like that then. That are going to come around each end. So do that at the other end as well. So with these top flaps now, we've sort of got double fabrics. We want to trim away the top part of that. So if you just cut along that fold there, so if you imagine that's sort of either side of our zip, do that on both pieces and then cut away the top flap. And I'll sort of show you that in better detail once I've done it so you can see See what I mean? Careful you don't sort of cut away the bottom one as well. Like that. So you then want to get in there and remove the tape from the end of the template. Fold the flaps back, make it easier to get into. Press that in and pull down those first flaps like that and then do the same at the other end so cut away the top flaps Move the back in, pull it all in and then pull down the flaps. So we've now got an attached um, sort of shape. We're now going to stick down all of the rest of these flaps but we are going to need some glue to do that now. So I've got a bit of glue on my card there. I'm just going to begin by trimming off the bottom flaps. If you pull those two side ones out and then just trim a little bit off so you've still got enough to stick up against the end of the bag and then you can either put the glue onto the flap or onto the you know onto the attached bit doesn't really make any difference and I'm actually just using my Gorilla Wood glue for this which I find works really well with fabric projects 
but if you've got a fabric glue that you like to use then use that. So stick that down against the end of the bag and then if you've got any of those little flaps left at the top you can just pop a little bit of glue under those as well and just sort of secure those. Pull those down nice and neatly and then just trim off those side flaps as well just so you've probably got about six millimetres or a quarter of an inch maybe a little bit more just to tuck in and then what I like to do at the sides as well is just go off at a tiny bit of an angle so don't angle it too much but just cut away you know an angle of fabric and then you'll find that the flaps won't overhang onto the top and bottom edges like that. again apply the glue and then stick down we want to make these ends as neat as possible but we are actually going to be covering them so none of this is going to be visible. I'm going to put another piece of um, fabric covered card at each end to tidy, tidy it all up and then I'm going to use some bunker or some braid around the edges. So all of this will be completely hidden. So tuck that in as well. Still got a little bit of those top flaps there sticking up so if you can get a little bit more glue in there and press those down then do that but like I say we'll hide all of that under our end end pieces just get them down as flat as you can and do the same at the other end make sure your template is sort of keeping its shape as you're working on it you might sort of be pressing it in without realizing let's put that end flat down first. Do your top and bottoms first and then bring your sides in. Again, trim off your sides. Make the angled edges. And then glue those down as well. all in and get it all as neat as you can. And we're now ready to cut our end pieces. So for the ends of the bag we're going to be using covered card again. So measure the end of your bag height and width and then you want to cut a piece of card that's going to fit just on the inside edge. So if you lay it on there like that you can just see a little border around the outside edge. Now I'm not giving measurements for this because you may have pulled your fabric slightly tighter or you may have been looser than me and then your end will be a different size. So just measure it and then cut your piece like that. Cut two pieces, put them together like that and we're just going to trim off the corner. So just that little sharp bit. So just sort of curve your scissors as you make the cut. Make sure your card stays together. Like that. And then we're going to apply double sided tape again. of fabric for each piece leaving a border of about six millimeters or a quarter of an inch and then remove the tape back in lay that sticky side up on the wrong side of the fabric and then I like to begin by pulling over the corners and you may have another technique of covering things but you know use that way if you prefer you might like to cut triangles in the fabric or slits in the fabric. 
I find this works quite well at giving a nice neat edge. And then apply glue to the folded over corners. And pull in the fabric nice and tightly so you're getting that nice edge. Do the opposite edge first. And go on to the top and bottom. And remember if you're using a fabric that has a stripe or a pattern that needs to go a particular way, then have a think about that here. Obviously so that it sort of runs in line with the bag. Push it all nice and tightly into the centre. And then do the same with the other piece. So we're now ready to glue these into place. And I am going to use glue for this. So we'll apply the glue to the end. And then pop that into place. Press it down firmly, but be gentle with it as well because you don't want to crush the cardboard. Like that. The other end as well. Okay, give it a press into place. I'm going to leave those to dry off for a moment and then we can add the braid around the outside edges. I'm using this lovely dark blue bunker or braid and this is a millimetre thick. So apply glue around the edge of your end panel. So just really in the gap, that little border that we've left around the edge there. we've got it all the way around and then bring in your bunker and you can actually start this at the top in the centre so where the edges join. Get your first bit in place and then feed it around and it's such lovely sort of slinky stuff it's really easy to sort of feed around. before you snip the end off and then snip that as close to the beginning as you can and then do the same at the other end so now cut a little piece of your main coloured fabric measure in 20 millimetres or three quarters of an inch by 15 millimetres or 5 eighths of an inch and then we're just going to fold over a tiny little border along one long edge or a little hem rather. Glue on there like that and then just fold that down. This is going to make a little pocket, so we're going to stick that in the centre at what will become the front of our bag. So if you bring in your rule and just line it up like that, and then you want to place it obviously centrally, but that will be about 17 millimetres from one side. So if you just sort of make sure first before applying the glue. Just sort of line it up and check that the 17 is correct. It's probably actually going to be about 15. So lay it there like that. Make a note of where the pattern is or something of where you need to stick it. I think that'll make it easier. So I'm just alongside that second leaf up. And then just put a little bit of glue along the sides and along the bottom. I'm 
just going to double check before I stick that down. I can come this way a tiny bit. Make sure you're right along that bottom edge. Got a little pocket there. I've just sort of raised mine up at the top so that we can see that it is a little pocket. You might want to do it in a contrasting fabric. Leave that to dry. We're now going to make the bottom part of the handles. Now I'm going to have mine part fabric up to probably just above the height of the pocket and then I'm going to do leather for the sort of handheld bits. But if you wanted to do them all in fabric or all in leather then you can do it that way but I just think this adds a little bit more detail. So cut two pieces of fabric measuring 52 millimetres, so that's just over two inches, two inches and one sixteenth by nine millimetres or three eighths of an inch. And again, we're going to do a border along each long edge of each piece. So apply your glue. And if you've got like a cord that's about three millimetres thick, then you could use that. You know the sort of stuff that they have on these overnight bags? It's like a sort of thick, I don't really know what it's called to be honest, but it's like a, almost a sort of embroidered cord. I know what I mean, I'm picturing it as I'm saying it, but I can't explain it. <laughs> Probably cord is the wrong word. So fold in one edge, down, and then bring over the other edge. I want this to be about three or four millimetres wide. If you've wiped off the glue with your fingers, you might need to put a little bit more on. Put a little bit on that bottom edge there. Neaten that up it out which will sort of make your edges neater and then snip off any sort of loose ends not taking too much away from the length and then do the same with your other one like that make sure they're the same length so trim them if you need to and then turn the first one over and apply glue I think that word I was looking for was binding. It's like a really sort of strong fabric, almost like a sort of seatbelt fabric. I'm sure you're all shouting at the screen now what it's actually called. <laughs> so this is going to sit, so it's sort of half and half covering the edge of the pocket line there. and. The top of it will be in line with the top of the pocket. So if you sort of position it like that and then fold it up so that your top edge there can, I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but that's in alignment with the top of my pocket there. So then fold it underneath and up the other side. Get that piece of glue out. Like that. Looks really nice, doesn't it? And then the same on this one. I really like these colour choices. Not to blow my own trumpet or anything. And then the same with that one. That's all roughly in place. That's about right actually. In fact, I'm just going to turn that round because I've got a neater end at the other end. I like the front edge always to look the neatest. I'm going to make sure that's sitting at the top of the pocket there and then fold it round. I think what we'll do as well is have something sitting in the pocket just so that we can see it a little bit better. But now we can bring in the leather and make the handles. So for my back handles I'm going to be using this lovely fine glove leather. Now I bought this many years ago, it was either from Little Trimmings, who are now the Doll's House Draper, or it might have been from eBay. 
so it's worth having a search around for but if you can't find any you might have an old handbag or purse or an old pair of gloves gloves or something that you could use it cuts really easily with scissors or you can use your craft knife and steel rule and cut it on your cutting mat just hold your steel rule really tightly and go along really slowly with a sharp craft knife or with a new blade in it so cut two pieces that are, that are as thick as your lower part of your handle and a hundred millimeters or four inches long and you then want to trim a point in both ends of each piece so I'm going to start at the back just to sort of get a practice run so coat the back of the leather in glue all the way along there like that and then what I want to do is sort of fold it in half from just below the points so the points will actually join to the bag so just really carefully start folding it in half pressing it together it's a bit messy but it should glue nicely together and just sort of keep going all the way down nice and slowly pushing the sides together and then just leave the point at the bottom open if you see what I mean go along again and see how it's sort of drying now I'm making a mess with the glue but I can clean that off so just get it so that it's just all pressed together and you're pushing the sort of non-leather side together so the leather is on the outside so we're making a sort of rounded handle if you see you can just leave them flat if you think this is a little bit fiddly I just think this is going to look nice and more sort of detailed as well it's the sort of bag I'm using for research has handle, handles like this so I'm just cleaning the glue off now that seems to be stuck that did stick quite quickly once I got the sides together so clean up the handle and you can do that really just by rubbing the glue off that comes off really easily just go along with your nail or even just the edge of your finger and that will all just sort of flake off and it dries clear anyway and then we're going to stick these so that the point there just overlaps the top of that base part of the handle so just put a little bit of glue on each of these and I already started this bit you might notice that there was a bit of um, leather stuck to the handle there and then realized I wasn't filming so this is the sort of second try here so I'm overlapping there by about six millimeters or a quarter of an inch and then you want to fold it down like that and do the same on the other side so make sure you're sort of level pull that one up a little bit more press that down you can get rid of that excess glue around the leather there just wipe that away with the end of your cocktail stick that, and there's our first handle so you need them long enough so that uh, the two are going to meet in the middle like that so do the same with the other one if I can be a little bit neater this time so I found that to be a little bit easier and neater if you fold the leather first so you've actually got that crease there and then you apply your glue and then it's easier to go along and do that and not get so much glue everywhere so that's a lot neater that one so I'm going to attach this one as well And remember to come down by that same amount six millimeters or a quarter of an inch make sure I'm attaching the right piece there right side and again feed that around just sort of roughly hold it in and then make sure that they're more or less even I think I need to come up a little bit there I'm a little bit shorter on this side 
Okay, so there's the basic bag and now we're going to add a few finishing touches. So the first thing I want to do is just put a little square of leather on the front there, above the pocket and in the centre of the handles. So I'm just going to cut a little bit like that. And then this is a tiny little detail, but what you can do is just bring in your scribe and just put a few little dots around the outside edge just to look like stitching. Just one of those real little details that is going to make a difference. So just go around like that a few times. Just sort of pierce in the fabric. You can use a pin to do that if you haven't got a scribe. And then glue that into place. Don't need much glue for that. the whole bottle off. Let's get that in the centre in there. About right. Like that. And then I want to add like a little bit here, like another little sort of pointed bit, which would be like the end of the zip. So if you cut a bit, I don't know, a little square like that, about, so about five millimetres. Again, just create a little point, not quite so pointed as the end of the handles, maybe. Even it up like that. Then we can just stick that at the end there. So just apply glue halfway on that. Sit that there. And then what I want to do is just make a little sort of leather grip, I suppose, to hold the handles together. So let's see, let's just cut a slightly thicker bit. Probably about seven millimetres across. And then you want it to come around like that and we'll glue it together underneath so do it about 12 millimetres, half an inch long. Like that. Bit of glue on one end. <laughs> That's because my cocktail stick's all bunged up with glue. So I sort of trap your handles in like that. And then press that around. I'm going to squeeze it together underneath if you bring it into sort of like a little cylinder pull that handle through a little bit like that get them to sort of sit straight so one final little bit I want to add now, it's just a little indication of a zip at this end. So I'm using this really fine brass sheet and you can see I've been using this to make some little brass pull handles for a sewing pattern cabinet that I made recently on Patreon. And it's really pliable, really flexible, but you could use any sort of gold foil, even sort of sweet wrapper foil. This is such a tiny little bit we're going to be using and I've cut it here. And I've, again, just cut a little point in one end, and that's probably just a 2.5 millimetres wide, so 3 30 seconds of an inch. And I just want to put a little dot of glue there, and then pop that into place. I'm just going to grab my fine nose tweezers. Oh, <laughs> and I still dropped it. And then just stick that there. That just sort of fell on there then, so straighten it up like that. Really pleased with that. And there is the completed bag. And I'm really pleased with this. I think for a fairly easy little project that's turned out really well. Now here I've just shared with you the technique 
and given you a few sort of little tips and ideas of how to decorate the piece if you like. But of course you don't have to do it exactly like this. And I know what a clever bunch you are, I know you'll work wonders with this little tutorial. Now if you do have a go at making it, I would love to see what you do with it. So please do share your photographs in the group, little bits and pieces by you. And there's lots of things you could do with it. You could have the little sort of pointed bit of handle, fold it over and fold a little brass ring inside of it. And then again, fold the handles through. So you've got sort of like a, a double handle there. Obviously you can use all different types of fabric, little brass embellishments if you have them. If you can get hold of 12 scale zips then you could add a zip down the centre there. Just make your um, sort of fabric a tiny bit shorter so that it doesn't join quite so um, close at the top there. And then you could see your zip. But there, there are loads of things you could do with it. Maybe tie a scarf to one of the handles or something. And like I say, I really look forward to seeing what you make of this piece. So I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.